Cathy, there is anger, there is distress, and there is utter, utter disbelief that this town, which has suffered so much at the hands of sectarian violence, might be dealing with its aftermath once again. I say might because the police say they're keeping an open mind, but the focus of their investigation is the distant Republican group known as the new IRA. 25 years after the Omar bombing, this is a town in its back in the spotlight it never wanted. And DCI John Caldwell is a man fighting for his life. Echoes of a past this community hoped never to experience again. A police officer gunned down, not in the line of duty, but as he finished coaching an under-15s football team. Local people will see an increase and the police presence in the area and the coming hour. Detective the Chief Inspector John Caldwell is a high profile police officer in Northern Ireland. He's led investigations into organised crime and dissident Republican terrorist groups. In the last 24 hours, though, he's been fighting for his life. At around 8 pm, football practice just finishing. That car park was packed with adults and children. In amidst them, DCI John Caldwell was packing footballs into the boot of his car when two men opened fire, hitting not just DCI Caldwell, but spray bullets hit other cars too. A senior police officer said to me today, the fact that we're dealing with just one wounded person is frankly a miracle. DCI Caldwell tried to run away, making it just a few steps before dropping to the ground. And still, the gunman continued to shoot at him where he fell. And throughout all of this, watching on, DCI Caldwell's own young son. In the mayhem, most understandably scattered, running for their lives, one ran to DCI Caldwell and started life-saving first aid. The trauma runs through not just those there, but those dealing with the aftermath. As a chief constable, it's the one phone call you, you never want to get that you've had a colleague attacked, killed or seriously injured. So clearly it's a deeply troubling day for the organisation that suffered so much in the past. This morning, three men aged 38, 45 and 47 were arrested in County Tyrone under the Terrorism Act on suspicion of attempted murder. We have the surveillance of an off-duty officer, three arrests already, two gunmen, a burned-out car. How professional and well-resourced do you think the organisation behind this is? Our primary focus of that investigation is on violent dissident Republicans and within that, uh, a group called New IRA. Um, we continue to work against these groups. We know that they have a level of capability. And as we've seen, um, this horrific attack play out last night. Just half a mile from the shooting, forensic officers examine a burned out car believed to be used in the attack. An attack which shell shocked politicians from all sides united to condemn. This has really sent shockwaves right throughout the Kiliklahar and Oma area. People are just um, defined at what happened here last night. And in particular, it's not just an attack on the local police officer, it's an attack on our local community here, and we outright condemn that. Police say they are keeping an open mind, but the focus of their investigation is the new IRA, a group which just last month said they'd, quote, use all means at its disposal to end British rule. The new IRA is an amalgamation of a, a number of Republican paramilitary organisations. It sees itself as the modern iteration of a historic tradition going back, in some cases, hundreds of years. It, but it is only capable of engaging in sporadic violence and is not capable of organising a sustained terrorist campaign. This wasn't just an attack on a well-known police officer, though. The person gunned down is a husband and a father and a good man, say his friends. He's a bit of a character. I mean, he's, uh, he's uh, very good humoured, um, he, despite the, the amount of stuff and, and things that he, he investigates on a day-to-day -day basis. He's a very affable character. I mean, he's, he's very, very popular uh, within his team, and, and he can't always say that about senior, senior management at times in places, but, I mean, I, I haven't heard anyone say a bad word about, about John. I mean, he's really, really committed about what he does, and, again, that, that 
dedication and devotion to public service uh, extends into his private life where he's, he's given a bit more and he feels he needs to give a bit more to the, to the community. So, I mean, that's a, a testament to the man and his character. And I say, I'm just, I'm just hoping and praying that he, that he pulls through this. In the heart of Omar stands a memorial to the 29 victims of an IRA bomb that ripped through this town 25 years ago. This evening, the dark shadow of sectarian violence hangs overhead once more. Well, in a moment, I'll speak to Claire Hanna, the SDLP MP for South Belfast. But first, I'm joined by retired Northern Irish Detective Chief Superintendent John McVeigh, a 15-year veteran of the serious crime branch, the same unit that shooting victim John Caldwell works for. Uh, John McVeigh, as you know, DCI Caldwell, I just wondered if you could give us first a sense of the man from your time working with him. Certainly, uh, he's somebody who's dedicated his policing service to investigate uh, serious crime, uh, including homicide uh, and terrorist offences. And he's been involved, as been previously said, in some very high profile cases in Northern Ireland and has not been shy uh, putting himself at the forefront of those uh, very serious, significant investigations. So his dedication and courage uh, has shone through throughout his service. Uh, and it's just despicable that somebody who committed himself to bring families justice has found his own family and himself at the hands of these murderous people. Mm. I mean, you yourself are a veteran of the police service of Northern Ireland. This must reawaken memories, does it, of, of the troubles? Well, it does. Uh, and we have thankfully seen uh, a huge reduction in terrorism, you know, through the, the, the peace agreement and over the last uh, 25 years. Um, but it has always uh, still remained. There has been a determined group. Uh, the main group at the minute is the new IRA that has been stated. Uh, and we have also always, uh, even throughout the, uh, the peace agreement times, been placing under either a severe threat environment or substantial their threat environment, which means an attack is highly likely. Mm. I mean, that threat level had been reduced a year ago. Do you think that was premature? Did it underestimate the nature of the threat from dissident Republicans in particular? I don't think it underestimated it. I, I think it was a reflection of the assessment at the time. It is something that is reviewed regularly, uh, and I am sure there will be uh, a further assessment in the near future around this. There has been a number of attacks on police in recent months, and I'm sure those that's responsibility to set the assessment will, will factor that in. So do you fear that we're seeing an uptick in the level of violence in the province then? There, there's no doubt that um, the last three or four months there has been an uptick. There was very serious incidents um, uh, in the northwest of Northern Ireland. Uh, just uh, a month or two ago, there was a explosion uh, activated as a police vehicle drove past in Straban uh, and luckily the police officers uh, were not seriously injured on that occasion. So there has been a concerted attempt uh, and some successes and successful attacks uh, in, in recent months and that is of course uh, a concern to, mm. to the officer. Around. I mean, the Stormont Assembly, the power sharing in the Assembly, has been suspended for a year now. Um, I mean, how much has that sort of political uncertainty that we've had in the wake of Brexit allowed serious organised crime and terrorism to start to tick up again, as you put it? The terrorist groups and organised crime groups and paramilitaries uh, in some ways specialise at filling voids that exist uh, or vacuums created by things like the political uncertainty. So I, I think it is uh, not helpful that the Assembly isn't sitting, but I, I don't think it's the root cause. Uh, and the, the Police Service of Northern Ireland, uh, certainly during my tenure, uh, has been well equipped to address uh, and deal with the threat that it was uh, facing. John McVeigh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, I'm joined now by Claire Hanna, the nationalist SDLP MP for South, South Belfast. Uh, Claire Hanna, when you heard that a police officer had been gunned down after this, you know, he was co coaching children, how did you react to what you were hearing then? 
Well, I, I think for everybody, it just it, it takes you back, it drags people back, and and you're horrified and initially um, uh, think about as family and and indeed the wider community because you say, as you say, this is exactly um, the sort of officer we need to police um, somewhere like this, somebody who was engaged with their community um, and and giving back uh, and stepping up. So, um, and I think particularly for a community like Oma, which uh, as your piece uh, outlined, has already had such profound experience of of violence. It's, it's it's upsetting for people and it has spooked and uh, and destabilized people mm. at a time when um this this region is already quite destabilized well it's interesting the political reaction today because uh, the sdlp was among the the parties to sign a joint statement condemning what had happened um is there a concern does that reflect a concern that this might lead to a, a resurgence of violence well, you touched on it in your in your last uh, piece there, and it, it's it's too simplistic to draw direct lines, but it is a reality that a prolonged vacuum creates space for for more extreme ideologies um, to thrive and. For most of the last few years here, politics hasn't been about delivery and, and public services and the everyday. It has been about national identity and borders and sovereignty and all of those sharp things that the Good Friday Agreement um, was designed to soften. And it has absolutely uh, breathed life into, into, into old grievances. And obviously, the issues of, of, of dissident Republicans, and, and in the main, that's a small number of fantasists who, who romanticise violence, but um, that obviously pre dates um, the, the, the vacuum and, and, and the polarisation of the last few years um, and the security threat is absolutely an issue but it is um, the instability that is the wider problem right. and the fact that we are not going in the right direction. Well so how do you get people going back in the right direction? I mean would you say to Rishi Sunak for example that he should go ahead with this deal on the Northern Ireland Protocol whether or not the DUP say yes or no? Look, we're, we're, there's not a brilliant outcome and a road forward, but I would absolutely um, say that. And in particular, you would, you would, as I say, these are complicated issues without a, a single cause. But those who who do want to use this region really for their own kind of narrow and immediate uh, political interest should take a step back and think about uh, where these roads lead us. And absolutely, a, a deal um, that takes those very acute and sharp dividing lines about um, core issues um, out of the everyday day politics and that allows us to get back into delivery when we're talking about health and education and our common interest and um, that is absolutely uh, what I think needs to happen politically. Claire Hannah thanks very much for joining us.